Hi all, I'm Vaik, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Dynamo AI. Uh, Dynamo AI was born out of my PhD at MIT, um, where we focus on like, okay, what are all the vulnerabilities um, you companies face when they are deploying AI models in like production scale? So in today's talk, I'm going to be talking about how do enterprises, Fortune 500 companies, or like even like uh, mid-market companies, deploy enterprise-grade compliant generative AI. So. From like a recent survey from McKinsey, we see that like 91% of like executives are not ready to deploy AI in production. Um, a lot of like pilots are going on, but like for enterprises to take it to production, they have to make sure that these models are like compliant, responsible, and trustworthy. So, what do I mean by that? So, in order to deploy compliant generative AI, there are like five critical components which we identify, right? So, the first one is to make sure it's secure. Is it like following all the necessary compliance strategies defined by your organization? Say, for example, if you're a finance, um, financial services company, you can't talk about like merger and acquisitions. Like an analyst cannot like ping the chatbot or a copilot in order to get answers to these sensitive questions, right? And then, is it human centric? Um, are there like the necessary like human feedback loops incorporated in your AI for these models to actually like um, learn continuously? Right? And then the next one is obviously it needs to be adaptive to like kind of the use cases as an enterprise, which you have. And the most important thing is um, robustness. Right? Numerous kind of like privacy attacks, data leaks, PII getting like exposed from these like large models. How do you make sure these problems are like overcome? And above all, um, are these models like highly performant in terms of like lowering the cost while achieving like maximum like accuracy or whatever performance? So kind of like um, Mapping the landscape here, we see there to be like three key case studies or like use cases where we see like um, there's a lot of risk before models go to production. So one is obviously uh, making sure like security red teaming. What I mean by that is like these are all the different kinds of attacks, right? So with like the new um, regulations uh, coming into place, like GDPR or CCPA, EUA Act, it is important to make sure like issues like model inversion leaking like PIIs. Um, or something that's not like um, pertaining to um, particular like regulations. How do you make sure these things are clearly documented? Is the first part. The second part is obviously pertaining to um, hallucinations. The specific uh, thing here is that like is the model actually retrieving the right data, right? Specifically around like RAG applications. How do you make sure the right data is like um, um, obtained and there's obviously no like false or like um, wrong information that is going out. And then the last piece is around like model misuse and uh, jailbreaking attempts. This includes everything from like data poisoning, a third-party attack, um, and like um, the most common use case which we've seen with customers is around people entering like malicious queries or prompts in order to get like things um, and making the model do things which it's not intended to do. So quickly going over, the first one is around securing Gen AI with red teaming. So what we've seen here is that. Um, Models, the, the, the better the models get, the larger the models get, it becomes easy for people to like, query models in order to like, extract data from these models. That's one of the main reasons why um, Bloomberg, when they launched Bloomberg GPT, they never released that model, mainly because they were worried that it had a lot of like, insider secrets. So kind of like we see the model training pipeline, it becomes obvious that like, from these like, models, you can easily extract um, and like, reverse engineer training data so one of the main things which like, a lot of these like, um, regulations enforce is around like, OK, you clearly need to document every single place in which the model can like, actually go wrong. So this is actually mandated by the EUA Act and also by like, the White House Executive Order, to name a few. Right? So at like, Dynamo, we provide this clear understanding, like a clear auditable report for your teams, everything from a legal compliance to machine learning to engineering teams, to clearly understand, OK, what are all the places, the model which you're like, using right now, um, where is it going wrong? What kind of sensitive information it is leaking? Uh, where is the model hallucinating? And um, these reports are like, really important for you to show to like, auditors when they audit your like, language model. And this is being enforced. Um, so specifically with the EU AI Act, you, enterprises can get fined up to $250 million, or 7.5% of your annual revenue if your model is like, not doing things it's intended to do, or if it's like, causing like, data leaks, privacy leaks, et cetera. So 
what we see here is that um, this is not something which only like oh like the model uh, training providers are like expected to follow or like engineering teams are expected to follow, right? We see that there are like four key teams that need to be involved in this like overall threat teaming process. So one is the data governance team, obviously the infosec and the cyber teams, the developers and the legal compliance teams. So upon like a consensus amongst like all these four teams is what is needed um, for enterprises to take model to production. Um, the next one, uh, this is like the most common problem when like uh, when it comes to like chatbots or like question answering systems, right? So how do you reduce the hallucinations uh, while making sure you're able to like give like clear, explainable insights? So we all know about like what happened with Air Canada, where like their chatbot started giving like uh, discounts uh, for like the wrong customers. This was a clear example of like how a rag-based system fails if it's not implemented um, properly. And same, like we've seen, like numerous like um, lawyers and like medical researchers uh, have uh, problems with ChatGPT because it's like kind of like um, linking to documents which never existed in the first place. So this is the overall kind of like uh, schematic diagram of how the overall like RAG process happens and what is like really needed um, in order to like make sure you have explainable evaluations, right? So the first thing we see is like OK, are you retrieving the right set of documents in order to answer a particular query? This is the place where like, a lot of systems fail, because th th there might be like, like millions of like, documents from which you have to extract, but are you extracting the right document? And then once you filter this, is the generated response in alignment with like, whatever the document is actually saying? And if it is, then comes response relevance. It's like, how good is that answer for that like, particular question? So these three places are like the places where like hallucinations can like easily happen, and enterprises need to be really careful. So one thing at Dynamo what we do is we help enterprises clearly understand where the models can go wrong, or like where is the model specifically like hallucinating. So all these like automated like reports are like generated so different teams can clearly understand what the model is like doing wrong, or like what the model is doing correct, and like how can you make sure. Um, there are no hallucinations in your um, work cycle. The final piece which I wanted to touch base is around like how do you secure Gen AI against misuse and making sure it's like aligning with internal compliance policies of organizations. So if in an ideal world, everyone's a nice person. So like say, for example, let's take the example of a um, chatbot. So if you're asking if a person's asking the chatbot, OK, how do I open a checking account? Perfectly fine. No worries. Easy answer. But what if the person asks something like, OK, which country is it best to avoid like federal capital gains tax? If the chatbot answers this, then it's technically a problem for that particular firm because it's becoming non-compliant, or like you're answering things which the system's not expected to answer. Or is it safe to take diabetes medications to reduce my weight? So this, again, is not like something which a uh, machine learning model can like, answer, because there are like, two sides to this, where like, one, yes, it might uh, work for like, certain things, but it also has the problem with like, okay, like FDA approval or things like that. Um, is it like, being a HIPAA-compliant response to a particular answer? So these things make things hard on like, what should I answer and like, what should I not answer? What is being compliant with my organization? What is not compliant with my organization? With respect to certain regulations, what is an, a reasonable answer that is compliant and like, what is not? So one thing which we've seen here is that like, these are like, some simple examples. But basically, um, there are a lot of times where like, there could be like, specific like, jailbreaking malicious attacks that are like, performed in order to like, break the system and like, make the model do things which it's not supposed to do. Right? And this is where, like, obviously, like, RLHF is um, useful, because with the human in the loop, you can like, uh, start defining compliant and like, non-compliant stuff. So at like, Dynamo, what we have is uh, we have a guard railing model. Um, so literally, all you have to do is cut, copy, paste your organization's like, uh, internal compliance policies. And we have like, a default set of uh, compliance policies for different countries. And then, basically, these guardrail models now would make sure you are like, adhering to all the policies defined by your organizations and your country and the regulations pertaining to your um, industry. So this would like, make sure 
that if something is getting violated, then there's a clear block on the input or like the output side of things. So what we've seen um, is for like in order for enter ent um, enterprises to deploy successful guardrails, they need to make sure that okay, first, are we clearly like understanding the business requirements and like what are all the issues pertaining to that? So defining the, the content moderation policy is the most important thing. And then what happens is um, you would start generating like realistic synthetic data. That's the first step of like the Dynamo Guard platform. And then there's like human feedback that's given in order to like make sure is it in like actual alignment. So it's like a yes or no with which you can like fine tune these policies that are getting generated. And then we would like fine tune the LLMs as a guardrail model. And then goes back to step one, all the internal red teaming across different stakeholders, they would like make sure and like validate, OK, is this now ready to go to production? And then um, models get sent to uh, production for the end users to actually use it. So one thing which we've seen, again, is like there's a lot of like open source guard railing models, which are like plug and play, like Llama Guard from Facebook, um, Azure um, Content Safety. But the challenge here, what we've seen is a one-size-fits-all model never works for everyone. Specifically around like the financial industry and the healthcare industry, if you have like clients in these industries, these one size fits all model are not capable enough to like learn from your organization's like needs. Right? Then that is where we've seen that like Dynamo Guard, specifically for like a customer's like internal compliance policies, we're able to like adhere to all the necessary um, regulations. Um, and henceforth, uh, big customers are able to take us to like production. So We've seen like all the issues that are like existing right now, and like how do we address them, right? But like it's really important to think like okay, over the next like six months, what are all the um, things we're expecting? So one is definitely going to be around like agents. Um, my favorite one is like going to be around like multimodal uh, models. How do you now start having like enterprise-ready applications that are like um, safe and responsible, um, specifically when you're introducing like the audio and the video components? Um, right, so that like again, AI is not being used for things it's not supposed to uh, be using. And then obviously you want to like make sure while having all these like necessary guardrails, like safety protocols, how do you still make sure that the model's like 100% um, with respect to its quality and like the performance doesn't degrade? So that's it. Um, I'd love to like chat with you all. Um, again, thank you for this opportunity. Yeah, cheers.